What's up and welcome to the episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. Today we're taking a look at USB-C power banks. Before we get started, why am I making a review on this in the first place? Well, most gaming laptops this year are coming out with USB-C power delivery charging ports, which allows you to take one of these USB battery banks and significantly extend, uh, potentially double the length of your battery life on the go. I love having a really long battery life when you're on a long car trip or an international flight, literally having twice as much battery life or taking two of these and having three times as much battery life is a really, really good thing for those of us that crave really long battery run times. On top of this, when you use one of these battery banks, you can see increased gaming performance when on the go. Obviously that's gonna vary a lot depending on the laptop and how power efficient that GPU is and what game you're playing as well. There's a lot of factors in here. I did a bunch of different tests with these power banks and we also have a USB-C power adapter. Now this is a 100 watt power adapter that can be used to power both the laptop or to quickly charge up these battery banks. Now, on first receiving some of these battery banks, I plugged them into a classic like 18 watt USB-C power charger and it took like over 24 hours to charge one of these guys from zero to full. And that made me go, holy crap, I really need a high power adapter. So I bought this Anchor 100 watt power adapter and we also did a charge test to see how fast each of these charged using it. A couple of important things to note is that you're gonna need a high power throughput USB-C cable. No just ordinary USB-C cable will do. Uh, you need to get special certified USB-C power delivery cables, otherwise uh, you will not have power going from the battery banks to your laptop. Now the battery banks do come with a cable, this one was one of the cables that came with one of these guys, and I think all three of them came with a cable if I remember correctly. Uh, that said, this cable is really nice because it's really long, so you're able to, for example, have this plugged into a wall and then have this like extend 10 feet out to the couch or wherever you're sitting or onto the bed, wherever you're using your laptop, and uh, it makes it very, very convenient. And the last thing I want to mention is that it is my dream to become a full-time tech reviewer, and it does help me so much if you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and if you do find this review helpful and you decide to buy any of these products, there are affiliate links in the description that will help support the channel, but no pressure to buy through those links. Get your tech wherever you can for the best price you can. So without further ado, let's get into the specs and let me talk about why I chose these three in particular. First up, we have PowerAd. This is a 26,800 mAh battery bank. I think these are all basically that level, 27,000 mAh. It's such a tiny difference. As far as I can tell, the Zendur and PowerAd are identically the same in every way, aside from the external casing. I'm guessing they're made in like the same factory. They perform the same, they charge the same, they're basically the same, they're just a different price and a slightly different external enclosure. Now as far as usability and function, the Ego Way weighs a little bit more at 1.33 pounds. Now the Power Add and the Zender both have two USB A's and two USB C's. Well the Ego Way has two USB A's and only one USB C. And another very important difference between these three is that the Ego Way only has 65 watts output on the USB-C, but that really didn't make much of a difference in the practical test as you will see coming up very soon. The last major difference between these three power banks is the price, of course. PowerAd costs $90, the Ego Way costs $70, and the Zender costs a whopping $129. You're getting a pretty wide variety of price here for very, very similar overall specs and feature set. The last major feature that is really important to talk about is bypass charging that the, both the Zender and the Power Add have. Bypass charging allows you to charge the battery bank at the same time as charging your laptop. So that means you can plug the Anchor 100 watt power adapter into the 100 watt input on this Zender and then having a 65 power watt output to the laptop. It's obviously not gonna be as powerful as the 100 watt output, but the primary use for bypass charging is either charging both the battery bank and the laptop while the laptop is under very light loads, such as just browsing the internet or watching Netflix. The other thing that bypass charging could be very useful for is charging both the laptop battery and the battery bank overnight. So if you're just wanting to top the batteries off in both devices at the same time, you can do that in a string by plugging one into the other. 
pretty cool. Now, if you want the full details and breakdown on everything about how I tested these, I'll have that info in the written article over at gizmoslip.tech, which I'll have a link to in the description down below. Let's go ahead and check out how these battery banks performed. So in the first test, I played Black Desert Online, which is the game that I'm playing a lot right now. And I played the game at max brightness, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on, no further optimization or tweaking of any settings. Nvidia battery boost was enabled, but it didn't seem to do anything. I was getting well above 30 frames per second, which is the limit by default in Nvidia battery boost. Now, if I didn't have these battery banks attached, I'd be getting about 45 minutes of gaming runtime at these settings. But with the USB battery banks, how did we do? Well, you can see the Power Ad and Zender both lasted one hour and 46 minutes, while the Ego Way lasted four minutes shorter at one hour and 42 minutes. Now, of course, there's gonna be some variability depending on what part of the game I was playing, but for the most part, I did basically the same activities for all three of these battery banks, and the results speak for themselves having nearly identical performance between all three battery banks. Now, I wanted to see if I could get a bit more playtime out of the battery banks if I tweaked my CPU. Settings. So I reduced the brightness down to 50% and I also put a 10 watt power limit on my CPU using Intel XTU. Now this basically didn't affect the performance in the games, but I noticed the CPU is taking a lot less power on average down from about 20 to 25 down to 10 watts, which was really helpful for extending the battery life. Now for the first full test, I tested each individual battery bank themselves, but for tests two and three, because of how time intensive these tests are and my limited time availability, I was forced to do estimated values for the Eagle Way and the Zender based on the Power Ads performance relative to these other two battery banks in the first test. So know that the Power Ad number is the actual test and the other two values is an estimate based on the initial test results. Because of the optimization that I used, I was able to extend the battery life of the gaming session by about 15 minutes. Unfortunately, because the GPU is the primary culprit that sucks up power, we didn't see that much performance increase. So if you really want to have a longer gaming battery life, you're gonna to need to look at cutting the power to the GPU itself. And that is possible to do. We'll get into that in a little bit. Moving on to the next test, I did a Netflix battery life test. Now this is gonna be at max brightness and max volume with the keyboard backlight off and airplane mode on. So know that if you turn the brightness down, turn the volume down, turn on airplane mode because maybe you've downloaded Loaded some videos to your laptop, you would likely see significantly increased run times. This is basically kind of worst case scenario watching Netflix with it plugged into the battery bank. Now without the battery bank, you're looking at about three hours of Netflix runtime at these settings. But with the battery bank, we were able to push six hours and 25 minutes with the power ad plugged in, which I think is a really significant improvement. Now, of course, it's very important to recognize that the Razer Blade Pro is one of those laptops that's not as optimized for battery life. But if you were to take a machine like the Zephyrus G14, which has a significantly more optimized uh, power delivery with the seven nanometer AMD Ryzen chip in it, you would see significantly better run times overall. Overall, I was really impressed with how much more viewing time you get with a battery bank attached to the laptop. Now, once these battery banks gave out completely, hit zero juice, we went ahead and plugged them into the Anchor 100 watt power adapter to see how long they would take to charge. Now, one important thing to note with the Anchor power watt adapter, you're gonna wanna put that USB power adapter in the top port closest to the ring light. And that's because that one seems to put out more juice and charge things a little bit quicker. With the power ad and the Zender, it took approximately two hours and 20 minutes. Well, with the Eagle Way, we managed to charge in just an hour and a half. And so that's a pretty big win, considering how close these three all were with the battery rundown time, to have that much faster of a charge time is really impressive. Now we went ahead and put together a battery life minutes per dollar chart here. And you can see that the Ego Way crushes the Power Ad and the Zender. And of course the Power Ad is quite a bit better than the Zender as well, especially considering they've functioned basically identical throughout every single test. The main downside for the Ego Way, of course, is that it does weigh a bit more. So if you're trying to have the lightest possible setup, you'll probably want to avoid the Ego Way. Now I went ahead and tested the power limits of the GPU under various power modes or power delivery systems, you might say. Now the top two results here, we have Nvidia Battery Boost 
turned off. Now, if you don't know what NVIDIA Battery Boost is, it's a feature that NVIDIA includes and turns on by default for your NVIDIA graphics card. So the way Battery Boost works is it power limits your GPU down to as low a power limit as it can go as long as you're hitting at least 30 frames per second or whatever you set the frames per second mark to be up to 45 watts of power. Obviously it will not go above 45 watts of power when you're on battery power no matter what you do. So that means that if you want the best performance in games, you're gonna wanna turn off NVIDIA Battery Boost. Now I did all my tests with NVIDIA Battery Boost on. That said, when you plug in a USB-C battery bank, battery boost is basically ignored for as long as you have the USB battery bank plugged in. So you're pulling 45 watts of power, you're getting increased performance and increased frame rates above 30 frames per second with the battery bank attached. But the moment your battery bank runs out, and the battery bank does tend to run out of juice before the internal laptop battery does. So the way it works is the battery bank will charge the laptop battery as well as help power the components but because the battery bank is not providing enough juice to keep the battery charged to max basically the laptop battery is slowly draining well the USB-C battery bank is draining faster if that makes so the battery bank dies fully dead at when the laptop battery is about 30 percent at least it did in my test for all three of these guys so what that means is that once your battery bank is fully dead you're going to be using Nvidia battery boost on battery mode and that's going to limit your FPS unless you disable NVIDIA Battery Boost. In the games I tested, both Counter-Strike Global Offensive and Far Cry 5, we're still pulling a ton of juice into this GPU, meaning that Battery Boost is just significantly limiting frame rate, while at the same time not providing much power savings. As a result, I basically recommend just disabling NVIDIA Battery Boost if you're gonna game, because you're gonna get significantly smoother gameplay when you do game, and it'll be like way more fun. In terms of the actual potential performance that you can get, taking a look at Counter-Strike Global Offensive on ultra settings at 1440p resolution, we were getting 65 frames per second with NVIDIA Battery Boost disabled. With just the laptop battery, we were getting 45 frames per second. And I know this is different frame rates, pretty significantly different frame rates. Now, I don't know why we're getting significantly more performance in Counter-Strike with the battery bank plugged in. Perhaps this is because the CPU is drawing so much power that it's throttling the game down. So basically, you have to have the battery bank to power all the components at a high enough throughput in order to push those high frame rates. Now that said, when we reduce the settings down to low, you can see we had a big boost in performance. With the battery bank attached, we were averaging above 120 frames per second while on battery power, which is hella impressive, like really, really impressive. So you can basically play this game at like max frame rate, super smooth, great gameplay, well on the go with a battery bank attached. Now, if you do not have the battery bank attached, we were just getting close to 60-ish frames per second on low settings. Now, if you, of course, you can drop this down to 1080p and probably push those settings up more just using the laptop battery. But overall, I'm really impressed with the additional performance you get while gaming while using one of these battery banks. Now, CSGO is obviously a very light title. What about when we run a very heavy demand title like Far Cry 5. Well, I tested this out on low settings at 1080p resolution, and you can see that without NVIDIA Battery Boost enabled, we were actually able to average 40 frames per second, and the gameplay was like really smooth, perfectly playable. But when we had NVIDIA Battery Boost enabled, we averaged significantly lower frames per second with significantly more stuttering going on. It definitely doesn't feel as fluid, which is very important if you're aiming in a first person shooter game. So the good news here is that if you disable NVIDIA Battery Boost, you've got some significant gaming chops that will make gameplay really, really fun. But unfortunately, you're only gonna be able to play for like two hours-ish, right? Especially if you optimize everything. But I mean, hey, that's like way better than 45 minutes of gameplay that you'd get without the battery bank. So overall, can I recommend buying these? Yes. 
Yes, so much, yes. If you have a laptop and you wanna extend its battery life, especially if it's kinda of like a three or four or five hour battery life, you wanna take that to seven, eight, nine hours, you can certainly do that using a USB-C battery bank. And these, as far as I can tell, are fantastic choices. You can't really go wrong with any of them except maybe the Zen Dirt. That's kind of over, really overpriced compared to the performance you're getting for the Power Add, which has the bypass charging, and the Ego Way, which is kinda of like the all around budget model. Plus, I do kinda of like Ego Way's flat profile. I think this would fit into backpacks a little bit easier, a little less chunky, even though it weighs more. Guess that's gonna be up to you and your personal preference and maybe what type of bag you choose to haul your laptop around in. Now, the last thing I wanna mention about using one of these power adapters is that this is very, very versatile. Now, I typically haul around a USB charging hub in my backpack anyway, and this is basically like the same thing, except that it can also power my laptop. So basically, this performs a two-in-one function. You no longer have to carry your laptop a power adapter if you know you're just gonna be doing light tasks. So you're doing, you're doing office work, you're just gonna watch Netflix. This is perfect. This is gonna function just as well as the regular power adapter in those situations. Now, gaming performance is gonna be just like using one of these. You can get pretty decent gaming performance on this, but the battery life in the Razer is gonna slowly drain down over time if you keep a game running the whole time. So this really can't be used for extended long gaming sessions, but shorter ones, absolutely, this works pretty well. So out of all of these, my recommendation is to pick up the Ego Way with this 100 watt power adapter and maybe get an extended extended extra long power delivery capable uh, USB-C charging cable. All right, that's it for this comparison review. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button. And if you wanna see more tech reviews in the future, I'll be making lots of laptop reviews. I've got an HP Omen 15 on the way. I'm gonna dive into some more budget laptops pretty soon here. My next upcoming videos will be comparing the Razer Blade Pro 17 with the Alienware M17. So if you don't wanna miss out on those videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button and tap the notification bell. Again, thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Brandon out. Boom.